This is how you get ahead of 99% of developers. You gotta stop thinking like 99% of developers because there's no listicle on how to get to that top 1% because nobody can give you that. And if they do, they're just telling you how to become average. But I'm gonna give you three things that are common to the top 1% and we're gonna have to try to reverse engineer what it takes to actually get there because more and more people learn to code with the goal to get a job. So they do the same things that hiring managers need from them. They solve lead code problems. They try to quote unquote master algorithms and data structures. They do small projects to create a diverse portfolio portfolio and they also get certifications that look good on their CV. All of this to make sure that their CV is tight and that they are ready to ace their coding interviews. All of these are fine because this is the industry that we're in and these are the demands and you need to meet them. But meeting these demands leads to actually being average because everybody's doing this. So what can you do to get ahead of everybody else? You gotta be original and you gotta think for yourself. What do you like to work on? Are you passionate about programming? And if you are, what are you trying to achieve with it? Because once you know the answer to these questions, then you can start working on that goal. Because it needs to be more than just getting a job. But okay, Dan, right? You're talking nonsense because I need this job, right? Because I need to make some money. And they're going to get the freedom to pursue my interests. Sure, 99% of people think this way. Because everybody thinks that if they just get a job and then they make some money, then they're going to be able to do the things that they want and then they can start creating cool projects on the side in their spare time. But that's questionable, right? Because your time is limited. And if we sell it before we actually know who we are and why we're doing what we're doing, if we just do that, right? We're gonna stay in that position for a long time. If you want to get to the top 1%, you have to build your own projects, you have to release them, you try to sell them, you can fail or succeed, and then you need to try again. And with time, you're gonna get a broad spectrum of skills that are gonna complement your programming skills. And that's how you build yourself to get to that top 1% of developers. And then 100 companies are gonna to want to hire you because you're gonna be a value add to them at any given point in time. So let's look at the three things that are common to the top 1% and then you can decide if they are actionable or not. And the first one is to stay current. You gotta keep up with industry advancements from learning new programming languages to learning new frameworks and technologies, for example, such as AI. As a top performer, you're gonna need to adapt quickly or you're gonna be left behind. Now listen, this doesn't mean that you need to have FOMO every time a new large language model is released, but you gotta be aware of it and then you need to decide whether it makes sense to get deeper into it. Next is to not specialize. Why? Because the logical thing is that if you specialize, then you can be the best in a particular area. And then you can be in the top 1% in that domain. And then you can demand to be paid very well for that particular skill. But that's limited thinking because if you specialize too much, you're gonna push yourself into a corner of the market and eventually you're gonna be automated away. As a specialist, you're actually primed for automation because you're not a robot. You're a creative individual with a broad spectrum of interests that can be complementary to each other. So you need to be more of a generalist and you need to be able to move gracefully between various technical skills that you gained along the way. The rule here is that if you work like a robot and if you specialize on tasks, then you become a robot and then you're gonna be outsourced or your job is gonna be automated as soon as possible. Programming is about problem solving and you need to use multiple tools. It's not about problem solving with React or problem solving with FastAPI or with whatever technology you specialize in. So keeping an open mind to adapt and grow your skills, this is the mindset that can get you to that top 1%. And the last important trait that you need is soft skills. And just these words, right, soft skills, they seem like it's a simple thing to get, but you don't really get this. You build yourself to get better, to be a good communicator, to be a good person to be around, a person that can naturally carry a conversation. You build yourself to be confident, you build yourself to be empathetic, and these things take years. It's easy to learn programming and to become average is not too hard either, but it's very, very hard to maintain focus on it if you don't have the passion for it. And it's hard to cultivate soft skills while you're deep in that tech, especially if you're in your head all the time trying to solve various logical problems, because being stuck in our heads makes us miss the bigger picture. And these are the three things that are common to the top 1%. And working on all of these three is gonna get us closer to that goal. But keep in mind that it's always a moving target because the closer that you are, the harder it is to realize that you're there. Again, you gotta be original and you gotta think for yourself. What do you like to work on? Are you passionate about programming? And if you are, what are you trying to achieve with it? That's it from my end. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.